Hello everyone, welcome back for our next weekly EKG. We're still starting off with the basics uh, to get our rhythm down and our foundation for interpreting these together. Uh, our first case today, actually our only case today, is going to be a 44-year-old male who is complaining of dizziness. One of the most vague complaints possible, but anytime anybody's dizzy, first thing we got to do is get vital signs. Vital signs are vital. Whoa, his heart rate's 144. That's fast. Um, oh my goodness, and his blood pressure is pretty high too. 167 over 118. So he is tachycardic, hypertensive. His respiratory rate's 26. Satting 98 with a sugar of 154 and a temp of 100. So what I'm seeing here is that everything is indicated that um, Something's going on because his blood pressure's high, heart rate's high, respiratory rate is high, and he even has a slight temperature. So next thing we'll move on to with any complaint of dizziness, we'll get our 12 lead within the first five minutes. And just like always, we start and interpret these the same way every time. So we start with rate. I always cheat a little bit and look at what the computer's telling me. Here it says 135. We do our quick eyeball estimation of our QRS complex distances. So here's one that lines up with the Bright pink line, here's 300, 150, 100. He is somewhere between 100 and 150, closer to 150, right? Which jives with what we see up here with a rate of 135. So I think that's consistent. We'll go with that for our rate. Rhythm, next question we ask, is there a P wave before every QRS? Is this a sinus rhythm? My favorite place to look is lead two. I do see a P wave before every QRS. Um, I would call this a sinus rhythm based on the fact that there's P waves before every QRS. Next, is it regular or irregular? Remember, the faster the heart rate gets, the more subtleties there could be in irregularity. I don't have a paper here to march out the QRS complexes together, but in general, they seem to be pretty regular. I don't see any big spaces, any smaller spaces. They seem to be pretty evenly spaced between the QRS complexes. I would call this a regular sinus rhythm. Next, we look at axis. Remember, we're looking at lead one and lead AVF. Our vector for our QRS is mostly up in lead one, so we have our left thumb is up, AVF. Um, I would call this mostly up here. It's kind of questionable, but in general, I would give this a normal axis. Um, it's kind of isoelectric there. Sometimes you can go to lead two as kind of your tiebreaker, and if lead two is up, then AVF is probably up and your axis is probably fine. So I'll go with normal axis here. Next, we move on to our intervals. This is where we kind of cheat and we look at the numbers, let the computer do the work for you. QRS, we want that less than 120. Here we're at 94. We're good to go with the QRS. See, they're nice and narrow. And then our QTC, we're looking over here. We're at 431. Uh, milliseconds, that's less than 450. 500, remember, is where you're at risk for spontaneous arrhythmias. I would call both of those intervals normal. And then we move on to our ST segments. Remember, we're looking at vascular territories here. I always like to start with 2, 3, and AVF. We're looking for any ST segment elevations or depressions. Let me see. There we go. So um, I don't see any ST segment elevations or depressions in our inferior leads. Next, I move to our high lateral leads. Our T wave is up here. It looks like our ST segments are, have a good baseline there. I don't see any elevations or depressions on the right side of the heart. Moving to the left side of the heart, uh, again, nice baseline right there. I don't see any ST segment elevations or depressions there to suggest ischemia. All of our T waves are upright. There's good ventricular repolarization. We're down in one, that's normal. Um, so I would say there's no ischemic changes here. So really, um, what we've got at the end of the day, if we take another look at this, we've got a sinus tachycardia with a rate of 135. We've got normal axis, normal intervals without any ischemic changes. That's how I would interpret this EKG. Just one step further, when we're dealing with a tachycardic patient, I always like to think about their root cause. And there's five root causes of tachycardia that are very important to know. One is decreased oxygen delivery. 
anemia, not enough red blood cells, hypoxia, pulmonary embolism perhaps, that heart is working harder to squeeze more blood out to where it needs to go because maybe it's not delivering enough oxygen to start with. So think about giving your patient oxygen if this is the case, right? Could be an infection, right? They get this massive vasodilation. It's really, they've lost their vascular tone, hard to deliver blood, so the heart beats faster to deliver more blood decreased volume, maybe they're bleeding, maybe they're dehydrated, the heart rate is going to increase to compensate for a volume loss to, again, deliver more blood to the tissues that need it. So if this is the case, we give IV fluid, right? So we give oxygen, we consider fluid. Um, same thing if it's infection, we can consider fluid here. Fourth cause of tachycardia, I think about drugs, um, specifically stimulants or possibly alcohol withdrawal. This is where the sympathetic nervous system is taking over. I would suspect that for this patient simply based, remember, vital signs are vital. They're gonna tell you what's going on with your patient. If they have decreased volume or infection, their blood pressure is probably gonna be low, right? Maybe their oxygen saturation will be low. This guy had everything was high. Remember, high blood pressure, high heart rate high respiratory rate, I would be really suspicious of either a stimulant or alcohol withdrawal in this guy. But I would approach it the same way, and maybe he's got a fluid delivery problem, so I'd start with some fluids. He's probably having a lot of insensible losses, and then consider other treatments. The other thing that can make people tachycardic, and we see fairly frequently, is adrenaline. Again, this is a sympathetic surge. Both your drugs and your adrenaline can do this. Um, say somebody just had a car wreck and they're really anxious and they're really nervous, they may be tachycardic because all of that adrenaline just got released into their system. And so that can be due to anxiety, can also be due to pain. Let's say somebody's got a badly fractured leg that looks abnormal. Um, and in this case, uh, say it is a fracture or a bad car wreck or something like that, you can treat pain. So we've got a lot of different options to think about here in tachycardia. You've got a lot of different options to treat it and recognize it and five good things to think about when it comes to tachycardia. Oxygen delivery, volume, bleeding, drugs, adrenaline, all of those things can cause a 12 lead to look like this. And that is all for today. Thank you for listening uh, and looking at our sinus tachycardia EKG.